Wow, what a privilege to go first. Let's talk about um, science and how entrepreneurs turn into, uh, how scientists turn into entrepreneurs, why that matters so much, why is it so damn difficult, and what could we do about it? Sounds okay? Good. So I'm here because, uh, let's see if this goes forward. Does this go forward? No, this does not go forward. There we go. I'm here because I used to be one of those guys. I used to be a scientist. Um, I, I did my PhD in biotechnology, and I worked with plant cell cultures that glow green in dark and make spare parts for humans. All very geeky stuff, and I loved my job. <laughs> Mostly because there was always the possibility that you will discover something, and for a, for a very short moment, I would know something about the world that no one else knows. And that feeling is amazing. And that kind of discoveries, discoveries about the world will obviously push humanity forward. Now, I love my job, but the most exciting part about my job was the job of my colleagues. <laughs> the stuff that everybody else around me were doing. Um, I was working with 2,000 scientists, working on all kinds of stuff, and I'm just going to share couple of uh, examples that I find the most exciting. So uh, think, think about the yeast, the baker's yeast, the stuff that you use for baking bread, right? So there, were, there was these guys who were engineering that yeast so that it would produce the smell of lavender or lemons. Crazy stuff, right? Now there was other people who took the same yeast and engineered it so that it would produce the, the juicy fat of pork. Can you imagine what that would do for the, all the plant-based foods, having that bacon fat in them? Now, there was other guys who took the same organism again, the same yeast, and engineered it so that it could produce egg proteins, solving one of the biggest mysteries of mankind, egg or the chicken. They just took the chicken completely away from the equation. There were other guys who took another organism and made it to take industrial waste and turn it into food. I mean. When you get to work with that kind of people, you feel like you're in a candy store of scientific discovery. This, this stuff is science fiction. It feels batshit crazy, but it's real. It's real in those labs. And that's what pissed me off. These crazy things are real. You can make those happen through scientific discovery but they are real only within the walls of those labs. They are not put in the right use. And I was asking, why? Why are we not putting these things in use? So, one of the answers is this. Radical innovation needs new startups as a vehicle. Some innovation big companies can take and put in use in their processes, in their business, but when it's radical, when it's something disruptive, something completely new, it doesn't really fit into the business of existing companies. So you need a new company. And for a new company, you need the scientist to become an entrepreneur. And that is really, really hard. Why is that hard? Um, here's my take on that. I've been to both worlds, and I know those two worlds are very, very different. They are like night and day. And I'm just trying to, trying to paint you a picture of the differences here. A researcher has a huge degree of autonomy. We can do pretty much whatever we want to. We have the academic freedom to do things. While as if you're an entrepreneur, you have your investors and your board telling you what to do. So it's less freedom. If you're a scientist, you work with project funding. And what that means, you work really, really hard to get some money. But once you get that money, your biggest headache is to make sure you use every penny of it. And you really don't need to deliver that much as long as you use all the money. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, you also work really hard to get the money. And once you get the money, you need to work even harder to deliver because it's an investment into your company. And those investors are not going to go away once that money is spent. Now, if you're a scientist, your primary goal, so your, your first goal is to expand the knowledge of mankind, right? 
to find out how this world works, make those discoveries, be that smart guy for a moment who knows something that everyone, no one else knows, right? That's your first goal. If you're an entrepreneur, your first goal is to come up with a product and sell it. It's a very different goal. You have to come up with a product and sell it. Now, if you're a scientist, your fundamental goal, your goal in the end, is to attract more funding. You expand the knowledge of mankind in order to get more money to do more of that, right? But if you're an entrepreneur, your fundamental goal is to make an exit. It's a very different kind of a goal for your work. If you're a scientist, you publish or you perish. You need to write papers, you need to tell others what you do, and need to do that very carefully and make sure that you publish all the time continuously. If you're an entrepreneur, uh, <laughs> you need to tackle milestones. They're very different kind of milestones. You don't need to tell everybody what you have done as long as you get shit done. If you're a scientist, your time scale is years. It takes years to get funding, it takes years to publish, and it takes years to do, run the experiments. If you're running a startup, it's months. And this creates a lot of frustration between investors and academic founders. The time scales are very, very different. Um, if you're a scientist, you're rigorously precise with everything you do. You follow the protocol, you do things properly because you need to publish it. If you're running a startup, you need to tolerate a lot of risk. You don't always need to know why things happened, why you messed up something, why something worked out. If you get it done, it's good enough. If it doesn't work out, you move on. And maybe the most important thing in this context is that the careers of scientists are very well established. When I graduate from school, I know exactly how my career is going to go. I do my PhD, I do a postdoc, a postdoc, a postdoc, a postdoc, then I get a tenure track position, I get an assistant professorship somewhere, I become a professor, and then I die. That's how your career works. Now, if you're in a startup, there is no such thing as a career. <laughs> you do your startup and then one day maybe an exit, and then who knows what. So it's a very vague thing. You have to be prepared for taking a chance, jumping on a moving train. And that is why it's really hard to attract a scientist out of the academic world. It's a very safe environment. You know how your career is going to go. And it feels really, really scary to jump into something where you have no idea what your career might look like. So two very, very different worlds. And us scientists, we don't get educated. No one tells us what that other world looks like. No one, no one, no one teaches us that in the, in the science school. And also the, the investors and the people who try to work with the academic founders quite often have no idea about the world where, where the scientists come from. And there's a clash. It's hard to communicate when you don't have the same language. It's hard to dream about becoming an entrepreneur when you don't have an idea what that world looks like. That's why it's so damn hard. That's why we also started Nordic Food Tech VC. That's why I, ch I jumped away from that academic world to the, to the dark side to try to help other scientists to make the same jump. My, my holy mission is to save as many scientists from research as I can. Um, so we have, a, we have a fund, we are, we're managing 42 million euros, we're investing in food tech companies, those early stage, very techy, deep food tech companies across Nordics and Baltics, and we have made eight investments this far. Mostly the founders are researchers, they are those very, very academic people, and they have turned into amazing entrepreneurs. With a bit of help, they can make all that crazy stuff happen in the real world. <laughs> and I could not imagine having a better job. Now, we have learned a couple of things on the way. I'm going to share some of those thoughts. Now, is there scientists here? Anyone? Few? Are there people who work with scientists? Few more? Good. This is for you. Um, it's a different kind of a world. Prepare for it. Take your time. Expose yourself to it. It's like, it's like learning a new language. Don't imagine that you do that over a weekend. 
it takes years. You have to go to events like this and just sit back and listen to all the crazy people talking about the crazy stuff and then just let it sink in. Be gentle to yourself, give yourself time to learn the new language. Also trust the other people. Find a guide for yourself. It could be, it could be your investor, it could be your potential first investor. Trust in them, let them help you with building the structures. Let them help you with figuring out how the funding path might work, how, the, how to set up the milestones for what you're doing, how to set up the goals to what you might be doing. Let them do that. Trust in them when you're creating the structures. Now, what about the rest of us? How to invest in the shiny new things? How to find the great research-based startups? Well, first of all, uh, discovery is what the scientists do the best. Trust in them for doing that. But also realize that the rest of, rest of it, the structures, that's new for us. So you need to help the scientists with that. You need to be very patient. You need to draw a lot of pictures how things work. Be patient with that. Don't think they are stupid because they don't speak your language. Because they speak another language and they speak that language very well. So be patient help with the structures and trust in the scientists. How do you find these things? Do not go to events like this. Scientists rarely go to events like this. Most of them never would, because all this here sounds like crazy shit for them. They stay in the labs. Go there. Go to the labs. Go to the academic conferences. But do not go there and ask if there is a startup that you could invest in. Because there isn't. And they will be just rolling their eyes and thinking, what are you talking about? Go there and ask what the researchers are most excited about in their own work. And they will tell you some crazy stuff. And then it's up to you to do the translation in your head and think whether this could actually be one of those tools that we could put in use and how to do that. Um, and then my ask. Please go to those places. Please be patient. Please put the extra work in explaining this other world to the researchers. Because those people in those labs, they have created crazy discoveries. They have tools sitting on the shelves that should be put in use. But that they might not be put in use because those worlds are so different. The researchers would easily spent years and years and years just researching more, exploring more, finding more about those tools instead of putting those tools in use. So please do that extra work. Go to the labs, help the research, researchers to uh, put those tools in use in real life. Because that is what the world really, really needs like. That is what truly makes a difference in the world. Thanks. Thank you, Lowry. I got a moment for a couple quick questions. Real quick, because we only got a little bit of time. Nordic Food Tech VC, all right? So, well, you guys have started, you're former scientists. So, I guess, you, what, did you guys have to take the leap into entrepreneurialism without this help? How did you start? Um, luckily, I'm the only geek in our team. I have, I have my guides in this world, my, my business partners who know the startup business. They know the food business. And they had to teach me a whole new language. I spent the first year just writing down words and then going back home and Googling, what does this mean? So I had my support making that leap from, from research to business. OK. And the last one, we got 50 seconds to go. Um, when you're looking at that relationship, startups and, and scientists, is it good to have this, the, the scientists as the founder as well? Or should they be like senior employees? What are some of your thoughts on that? They should be the founders. Okay. They should own it. They should have support. We should build a team of founders with diverse expertise, but they should be running the game. Interesting. And finally, name three food tech companies that we should be looking out for. Ooh, uh, I'm going to shamelessly name our own. Um, Enifer Bio in Finland, they take industrial waste and turn that into food. It sounds batshit crazy. Uh, I mentioned um, um, Melton Marble, or what they do. They, they make microbes 
that make animal fat. So that's the reason why your plant-based food doesn't really taste good, because it misses the juicy animal fat in it. Well, they make that happen with microbes. Super amazing. A third, actually not in our portfolio company, Solar Foods. I mean, if you don't know Solar Foods yet, check them out. They uh, have a microbe that turns air into food. It sounds really crazy, but it actually works. And they're building a factory in Finland right now. Pretty amazing stuff. Tremendous. One more round of applause. Lowry Ruta, thank you very much, sir. Thank you.